Land Rover Discovery 4 front brake. So we're going to have a look at upgrading our front brake. So we're going to go from the standard disc we've got on here to upgraded discs that are drilled and grooved. We're going to have a look at those in a minute. Uh, so, um, a couple of things to note. The Discovery 4 had slightly bigger discs than the Discovery 3. We've got the Discovery 3 outside, so we'll, we'll cover that quickly. So do you want to grab that tape measure in? Um, so, the discs on the Discovery 4, or at least our Discovery 4, if you go across top to bottom there, that's 38, 38, 36. 36, sorry, 36 centimetres. We better do some inches for our American friends. What's that, like 14 and a half inches-ish? 14 and a bit. 14 and a, 14 and a bit. Yeah, they do, we don't, don't do inches. I don't do inches. Quarter, yeah, 14 and a quarter? Quarter, yeah, 14 and a quarter. There we go. Um, so that's obviously from one side of the disc to the other. Now, um, we'll go and show, we've got the Discovery 3 outside, but the rule of thumb is, and I'll show you, if you can get your thumb in between, or at least, you, well, you can't get your thumb. You can't, see, I can't fit my thumb in between the disc and the heat shield here. There's no way my little thumb's going to go. We've only got 15 mil. 15 millimetres. So let's go and have a look at the Discovery 3. Um, the other thing you'll notice, this caliper's slightly different. And I don't know if this is to do with the, the brake size, but you've got this sort of grooves in the... In, the, in this face of the caliper, you've got the group. Right, we've got the Disco 3 parked up. We've got him just outside here, look. Um, oh, right then. Um, on here, you'll notice that I can well and truly get my thumb in between here. Okay, so our rule of thumb, see what I did there, is, um, is if you've got the small discs, you can get your thumb in, and you'll need to order the small disc. But what we're going to try and do is do a disc upgrade. Ian's got the tape measure here. And top to bottom, it's easier to measure to the middle actually, is um, 160. 160, which so would be 320, 320, which is 12 and, 12, and 12 and a half inches. There you go. So, right, so make sure you've got the big discs before you do this. We will do another video. I'll put the link there. It won't be there straight away, but when we do it, I will put the link there, I promise, um, to upgrade the Discovery 3 to Discovery 4 brakes, which I think will be good if you're towing and stuff. Right, that's all that nonsense done. Right, poor Defender's getting stuck there. Right, so what do you need to fit as part of this upgrade? Right, so we have got drilled and groove brake disc. You want to whip that bag open. Now, notice on the bag, it's got right hand written there. So as soon as you open the bag, get your pen out and put an R on there before you forget which one goes on which side and you'll notice that on this front face the grooves if you start in the middle and work out go anti-clockwise that's right in it yeah yeah so that they're, they're rotating anti-clockwise as they go out um, and then the left hand one as you go out the grooves are going in a clockwise direction so that's the difference So we'll get an L on there. Right, well Ian's left in that up. Um, what else have we got? We've got a set of brake pads, new brake pads, always worth doing when you replace your discs. Um, the other thing we're going to put in a kit, we'll get a kit together or worth if you're sourcing the bits yourself. Why not get one of these new, they're not expensive, countersunk screws that holds the disc on. So that goes in that little hole there. You'll see that's our first bit of fun is getting that out. Um, so they're, they're worth doing. Um, back to the brake pads, so these are the ones we've gone for, these EBC Ultimax 2. Wonder what Ultimax, wonder what was wrong with Ultimax 1. Anyway, there you go, Ultimax 2. Right, what else are we going to use? Um, those of you who, who watched our rear upgrade, we'll put the link there to our rear brake upgrade, um, will note that we add rusty sliders. So we're actually going to put new slider bolts in, because they're not that expensive. And you get new slider bolts, and actually in the bag there, do you want to rip that open here? We reckon in the paper envelope, they reckon they've given us some new little rubbery, grommety things, don't we? I hope so. Okay. Yes. So we've got some nice, fresh, new rubber grommets. So there we go. So that's going to be good. It's going to stop the water getting in and ruining our nice, shiny sliders. Um, the only thing we haven't got in this kit, and I've talked to the guys at Britpart, um is they you don't get the sort of springy 
retainery and irratly things. So you're going to have to reuse your... Why they don't supply them with the pads, I don't know. But to be fair, they tend not to be too bad. So that's the one thing that you're going to have to reuse. Everything else should be new. So just the other thing, these are vented discs, same as the other there. The grooves, we did mention it on the other video, they're supposed to keep your pads clean if you're going off-road dirty. Um, you get a bit of extra cooling with the extra holes. Um, we did try and convince ourselves we were saving weight, but we're, I still haven't convinced myself. Ian says it's rolling mass, so it's better. But anyway, yeah, whatever. Right, so what tools are we going to need? We're going to have some WD-40. Who doesn't need WD-40? Some copper grease, um, just to put back on some bolts. Hammer, we've got two hammers today. We're going... Um, this is one you might not have in your toolbox. That's a Torx T50 um, socket. We've got our little impact driver because those little countersunk bolts, those ones I was showing you earlier, they can be a pain. Those ones there, so we need the Torx T50. Oh, where am I pointing there? Um, right, Sam's written to us and said, rather than use a G-clamp to force the pads back, as you're changing the discs and the pads why don't you just ram a screwdriver in there i think he said it a little more delicately so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ram this plastic tool in between the pad and the disc to force the pistons back into the caliper um or we might use a screwdriver if we get a bit brutal right right let's do this so who's gonna do it today you're gonna do it today get your gloves on this right so we'll do now a real-time strip down of this um if you get a bit bored um you can fast forward it to when we start fitting the new stuff but we like to do it real time because we can go through any problems right we've jacked the car up working safe before we jack the car up we did actually raise the suspension because that gives you just a little bit more clearance here um give you a bit more room to work right so we are gonna remove the caliper first right oh no hold on are we gonna are we gonna get those bright Let's get the yeah, them off because I reckon that's the first thing we want to do. Yeah, we try and get those off. So we got that. So this impact driver, Ian explained on the other one, as you hammer it in, it twists anti-clockwise a little bit. How do we check that? You, you just rotate it the way you want to turn. As if you were turning it, you hold that and turn it anti-clockwise. And then that's the way that it will go then. Yeah. Make sure I'm not tightening so, it. So if you twist it a little bit with your hand in as you're doing it as well. Oh we got we got we got smoke dust pouring out the caliper. Look at that. Do we think that's moving? No. Oh sorry, I keep pointing in the wrong place. And the vibration should do it some good. Well, we could get the socket driver on. Do you want to get the socket driver on it and see if you can? But it's worth giving it a few taps. All right, Ian's got there. Ah, right, screwdriver in there. So there we go. One thing there, as you saw now, when he's starting to turn it. So we're just going to put a screwdriver in there. I'm not sure that's professional technique. But, oh, gosh. Who's chasing me now? Is that having it? It's going Yeah, it's slowly. going. It may have been better when we were using the impact to jam the disc, because all we may have been doing was... But but the shot would have... Anyway, it's worked, so I... Now, this screw does actually protrude back behind the disc, so it gets a bit rusty. On the other one, Ian, I think we did have to wind it back in a bit, as the dirt got in it, but it looks like Ian's got it. Slow to come out, but it's right now, one thing you could do is you can spray WD 40 in behind the disc because you have it, it is exposed behind there. So, if you're having problems or you you jack your car up the night before, get some WD. I mean, ideally, to get into that, you want to take all your caliper off, really. Yeah, if you're having that, means yeah. you then can't wedge, wedge yeah. it. So, it's a bit of a case of chicken and egg. And which do you, which do you want to try and do first? Our viewers are smart enough to work something out. Most of them are more clued up than you and me. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, we're not super pros. We just have a go. If we, Generally, the idea is if we can do it, most people should better do it. 
and you can see why it's worth getting those new ones because by the time you've mashed these up a, right, a, you can see how rusty it's got and secondly it's not too bad but they start getting a bit mashed up there so we, we've got that disc I might just I might just leave it in there just for the minute to stop anything falling off but but we're, we're happy and relaxed now that's one of the trickier jobs done where were you planning on wedging this? I don't know Sam said wedge them in there and it sort of sounded a good idea to me. Right, what have you got there? Do you want me to chip, turn the steering wheel a bit? No. Is that broken? Oh, that the pads? That's the wear sensor. That's isn't the it? wear sensor, but yeah. yeah, looks like the plastic's gone all brittle on the top there. So it should. So one be... thing we need to add to the kit is the wear sensor. We forgot that. It should be nice and round like that end there. But right, we'll add a wear sensor to the kit. You need to add that. Remember that, Ian. We'll put that together. So that unhooks off the bleed nipple. Um, so we'll take that wire all the way back and fit a new one of those. And where's that going? And then it disappears round underneath. So we'll get some we'll of this other stuff out of the way. There we go. Do you want me to? Right, let's let's turn the steering wheel. Let me get the keys a minute. Okay, so we've turned the wheel. That gives you a bit more room to work around this caliper where we're working. Now Ian's just gonna do something quickly. You don't need to do this, but just to show you, we're just gonna paint a bit of white on the top of the disc there. And if Ian rotates it round here, I just wanna show you what, what we can see in here. So you can see the white's the, the disc, and we can only see, and we're gonna try, we're gonna be a bit brutal, and we're gonna see if we can just hammer a screwdriver in on the right hand side of that line. So between the disc and the pad, and just see if it, mashes up the pad is that pushing it back in now as Ian yeah he's got a bit of room there have you not a lot not a lot it's... I mean there is you can get a caliper wine back tool and we may need to use that we've ordered one of those off eBay but Sam did say well you've got something to react against it might be worth doing it and often with the calipers once you've got them moving you're okay but Give it another hammer in, give it another bit more. Right, other note, while Ian manages to have a go at that, what you're actually doing is forcing hydraulic fluid back up into the reservoir. So make sure you don't, if you look there now, you can see it, you can see it, it's got quite high at the top there. So be careful when you're putting new pads in that you don't get hydraulic fluid you will get it come back into here you may need to drain a bit out or watch that and we've loosened the cap here i don't think you really need to i think there is a little air sort of valve in there um side note if you start getting brake fluid dripping that's probably why it's not good for your paintwork so right have you made any progress while i've been wittering on in we're getting so i've got a pretty bent screwdriver there and you bent my screwdriver Oh yeah, that's looking. So let's have a look at your gap now. Let's have a look. So we have indeed forced quite a gap there. Spin it to the disc so I can see the white bit again. That's it. There you go. Um, so we've got quite a good gap in there now. Right, so at least we've got a start on that. I think, I think that'll help. Right, that's an option. Or you could just take the disc off and use a wind back tool. We'll go through that in a minute. Or a G clamp to, to, to pull them back in. Right. What we're going to do now so now we're going to loosen we're going to now going to take off the caliper so we're going to try and undo this bolt at the top here with these bellows and another one at the bottom so what socket you got on that in 13 mil just about 13. oh that it ah right so what's happening there is as ian's turning it can you see that the whole slider is rotating there? So Ian's going to get a spanner on this pin on that. Just, now it may spin, it may not spin. You want to jam that against the caliper, really. Have a look. What size of spanner, Ian? 17. 17. Same as the back. Well done. I'm not going to take that one all the way off just yet. All right, and then let's have a look at the one. Oh, 
Same again there. You've got to get the spanner on it. But we're now in the kit. We don't get new nuts, right? We're only. Uh, did the new nuts come with the sliders? I'm going to have a uh, look. New well, bolts. No. New bolts. Let's have a look. Remind myself. So yeah, the the slide. So these are the sliders, um, and we're taking the nuts that go out the end. There. Let me take one out. It might might be worth considering new nuts, but I think we'll be alright. So he's on. So Ian's hold, using the spanner to hold this bit. Okay, there's the nut he's got out. Yeah, that's fine. So that nut goes in the in the end of there. You can see the Loctite on it there, just a bit. Yeah, there's the Loctite. Right, so let's have a look at Ian's getting on. The other so, one. Right, you've got both of those out now. Right now, we should... The, the caliper's now separate from the... Off. Now one thing we'll get is a couple of cable ties. I forgot to put those in what you need to get ready. Let me get a couple of cable ties for Ian. You go, he's gone. He's a step ahead of me. When did you remember we needed those? Uh, just now. Alright, and then if we cable tie that up to whatever we can find in there. Oh! Back of the pad falling apart. Uh, got all sorts of there. dust. And... All right, we'll have a look at that later. The caliper. But Where can we do you need that? You got, you got to like, go around that arm. You're gonna need like hundred cable ties, eh? Do you want me to get? Oh, I got a caliper. And that's just holding it. We don't want to stress that rubber pipe there too much, and just we want it out of the way as well. So there we go. So now you can see where Ian's mashed in there a little bit to try and push that. But we didn't mind mashing it right. We want to try and reuse those metal springs at the bottom. So how are my pads looking? So obviously that's where Ian's. You can see where he's grooved in there. Um, but they, they they're pretty thin. They're they're worth replacing. One point to note is which way round your weights are. They seem to have this counterweight on on these pads. Okay, they're at the but top. But it's just eh? on just on two. So it's just on the. And you've got them in different places, one for each side. So I'm going to guess they're always going to go on the outside, and it's at always going to go at the top there. Yeah. Yep, got that. I guess that's just going to reduce the brake noise or something. I guess that'll be four. I've not seen them before, but. Someone did say that the um, those groove pads, I didn't tell you this Ian, um, those groove discs could create a little bit more noise. Okay. Um, I can't see it would be, but someone did comment. So. Right, so are those springs both the same we reckon, aren't they? So that's the bottom one. That's the bottom one, let's have a look. So these are sort of anti-rattle retaining springy things. And we're reusing that, so don't be too brutal with those. Now, are you reckoning they're the same, Ian? They both look the same. Yeah. Same we weren't sure way. on the rear, but they... Yep, yeah, we're happy with them. They're the same. Right, we'll put those on the table. So now we've got we've got the disc going on, but we've got the caliper holder now. Uh, we can't get the disc, disc off until we get that caliper holder off. So this is what we suspect is different between the small and the big disc. Correct. Right? Yeah. We think the caliper itself the ca is, is is the same, or at least interchangeable. Um, we think it's this carrier that just moves the caliper further outboard to allow you to get a bigger disc in. Let me get out your way a bit, Ian. Come in from this angle. So that's seventeen. Is that right? Uh, no, this uh -huh. one is a 21. 21? Yeah. Oh! He's a monstrous. 
which is good because it means we're, we're not too worried about it rounding off or something. You got enough room there to get in. Yeah, just trying to move one of these. You got your ABS sensor, your wear sensor, your brake pipe. Brake pipe. It's like a super highway of brake stuff. Wondering whether it's worth just taking that clip off. That clip off there. Just to get. Oh, you could use a twenty-one spanner, or is it still gonna? Is the nut still well, gonna run into? Oh, it's twelve-sided. Oh, it's twelve-sided. Yeah. Right. Okay. Could we could we rotate it up and just loosen the top one? Uh, no, I don't think that'll get you out of the way enough. I think we do need to take it off. All right, we'll keep going. I'll grab a ten mil and get that top one off. Okay, so we're going to get a ten mil socket and just take that little bracket off at the top there. Give us a bit more room. Came undone easy enough, didn't it? Yeah, that would be tricky. I see how much more room that's going to give you then. Oh, yeah, that gets everything out of the way. I don't even get that. Oh, that is tight. They're fairly smooth though, they're not too corroded, they're coming off fairly easy. They're out of most of the weather behind there, aren't they? So, yeah. just wanted to get them, make sure they're both loose and turning before you take one out completely. <laughs> He's noticing the change in leverage. So, the only thing we've got to add to the kit is that, that wear sensor, isn't it? We'll get that sorted. I'm tight again now. It's gone tight, oh, has it gone tight with the... But yeah, it's getting a bit boring fast forward this bit. But at least if we film it all, you can see everything. Yeah, it's, it's, easy, it's easy enough to press the old fast forward or jump a bit. Isn't it? Not moving with that. It's hard. I'm trying to make it quicker for you. Come on, Ian. Everyone's waiting. Everyone's going to put the kettle. I'm waiting. It's taking a lot of force, those bolts, man. Yeah. However, he's a discovery. Two something tons. Two point seven. On that other one, can we? Yeah, they've got these little bolts here, these massive bolts here holding it on. Then you've got those tiny bolts going into the sliders. Yeah. yeah you're trying, trying to work out where all the force is going. That bolt must go out the back and must pick up a bit of dirt, and as you get certain, it'll give up. Giving up now. There we go. Right, so that's that's the bolt. It must protrude. You see that rusty bit at the end. That must protrude out the back of the holder, and obviously the dirt collects dirt, and then you're having to wind that out, which is why it, it got a bit stiffer. Um, but there's your 12-sided head, which is why you can't put a spanner on those. Um, Ian's gonna have a go with the. Turn your volume down. No, not nope. having it. That does not touch it. That's woken everyone up. We got her at this point in the video. Right, just see if you can, just just for the fun, see if you could swing that out. No, no, That's so that wouldn't. As it goes. No, so you have got to get them both all the way out. No the other shortcuts. Side was not this tricky to get out. Just, uh, right, we'll finish that one, and we'll come don't back. Really don't want to watch no. this. Right, while well, Ian's finishing that off, I'll look at the difference between... Um, so there's one of the brake pads we've just taken off, and if you compare that to one of the... 
the uh, you know you can see the the difference in in thickness there. We should have a great big chunk of pad on there, but this one has got uh, next to nothing. So there we go. We'll be and the, the pads are grooved as well, which must give extra cleaning. So right, and how are we doing? There we go. He's going loose again now. And we can get that. Well, then what we'll have to do next is once we've got that carrier off, we're gonna, is we're going to put new slider pins in. We'll have a look how, because if you watch the rear video, the slider pins were... Now, is there anything worth trying to get those sliders out, Ian, before we take it off, or should we do those in the vise? It's just a big chunk of metal, so you're not going to damage anything. These... Yeah, but you're not going to damage anything getting yeah. this in the vise. And then we're so, so now we're going to. If you haven't got a vice, it might be worth trying to do it on before you get them out. Yeah, access is fairly good. Um, Let's have a look. It might have been to do them by hand. But ours were. They were operational. They were moving already. Usually, you'll find out when you try and take those thirteen mil bolts out. If they spin then, then usually they're going to come out. Yep, so there you go. So that's, so that's the top one, and you can see that rubber section on it there. Because they're different, that's right. And that is the one that came out the that's top. That's the one out the top there, yeah. Yep. Just pull that rubber boot back first. Boop. Pull it off. And that, and that one, one hasn't, hasn't got, got and that's the, the bottom, boot. right. Um, yeah. But yeah, they both move, they both spin, so we should be able to pop some fresh grease in them. Right, Fresh so what? Pins. Right, let's get that disc off then, and then we'll and then we'll we'll paint those bits up. Okay, so we've got you got to take your counter sunk out. That counter sunk stop the disc flying flying off. Take that out. So there we go. So that's everything stripped down. Um, let's go, go and compare that disc to the new disc. Check everything lines up and looks good. Um, obviously, this is the right. So the holes all look the same. The diameter looks the same. There is a noticeable difference in weight. What? Which one's heavier? Yeah, this one's definitely heavier. Really? I think so. No, I think your right arm's just stronger. <laughs> I got it. Right. Right, spin them. Yeah. Try Hold it. on. There you go. does seem a little fraction lighter. Let's just check they're all the same size. Yeah, looks the same. Looks the same. Yeah. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to stop the video now. We're going to paint that carrier and then we'll come back and we'll put the new pins, reassemble and put these discs on. We'll just give it a little clean, clean that back plate, have a cup of tea and then we'll, we'll pop back in just a minute and we'll put it all back together again. Right, so we've laid all the parts out. We've got that um, I'll just show you what we're doing with the G clamps in a minute, but we've got everything laid out and we're going to rebuild it all now. So we've got the disc, the new little screw, the pads, we've cleaned the, the springs up, we've got the bolts clean, we've got the caliper slider painted, we've got our new slider pins, we've got some grease, some new rubber. Um, right, so the first job we've got to do just to get ready is to push the pistons back in. So we've got two G clamps on there. We've actually put one of the old pads back in here to protect the pistons. I don't want to scratch the front of the piston. Um, you can get piston wind back tools and all sorts, but the G clamps seem to be doing it for us down here. Yeah, I think that's about as far as we're going to go, isn't it? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll squash that rubber up, hasn't it? Looks like it. Yeah, yeah. so snap those off and that'll be, that'll be ready for later. So the reverse order of the way we did it. So our first job. All right, is that mating face clean there, Ian? Yeah. yeah. Is to grab the grab the disc. And now obviously we've got to line up the hole that the screw's going to go with the threaded plate. The easiest way I find is put your thumb in that hole, and then you know where you're aiming for. And we've got the threaded hole behind in there. You got your thing there. Torx T50. Get that wiggle. 
I don't really need that super, super tightly. I mean, because it's being held on with the wheel nut. Um, we could have put a bit of copper grease on that. We missed that, not to worry. Um, right, what have we got next? Slider. So we'll build the slider out. I'll put some scissors there if you want to open it with scissors in. Or tear it. Should have a little tear point, shouldn't it? I usually do. We got, in there, yes. got some what sort of grease we got in there, some sort of clear silicon grease, I mean. Yeah, so we're gonna put a bit. Now which slider went in the top, can you remember? Ian? Uh the one with the rubber goes in the top. Goes in the top, and the plain one goes in the bottom. So you want to get this the right way around. So you need this this little bellow bit. They both got this jagged edge to it, but one's got like an internal and that's Steve gonna to sit that over goes. that little collar there. So you want the one that's got the little there. Yeah. So we've got a bit underneath there. And then a bit more grease on the top. Yeah, they're so cheap those slider pins, isn't it's not worth not putting new ones on really. And which is the top for us then? It's gonna bolt on that, that way. Around. Yeah. So we've got these clean. You can tell the mating surfaces because they're the cleanest bit. Machine one. Yeah. So that should just slide back in there. Make sure we get that. A little skirt over that little. And then it should turn freely, move in and out by hand. That's a neat job. That's aim again on the other one. So just a little bit on there just to make sure underneath this boot is lubricated but it should be underneath that boot anyway sweet that's all good and grab those big bolts grab you the 21 oh where's the 21 socket you got it there ready yeah. Just use that five wheel steel paint for those sliders and it comes up right how long it will last the jury's out on but at least it makes the video a bit easier to watch Super tight. Yeah. As long as you've got both of them started, they yeah, should, be, should be fine. You just don't want to do one of them all the way in and then no. find you you're twisted and slightly out. And I reckon we'll get the the breaker bar just to nip those up. Do you reckon, Ian? Yeah. Grab it in the bar. Nice and firm there. Right, what are we going to go for next? Build up the caliper. I'll build up the, get the shoes in, sorry. He's just pushed. And they're the same top and bottom. Yeah, we checked that when we took it off, didn't we? On, yeah, and I'll just clean those up before. So. Bit of copper grease. We're going to put some on the back of the pads as well, shall we? So which pad was it? Do you remember which? We didn't do this on the other video, but it's probably worth putting some on the back. It can stop squealing, they reckon, can't it? Yeah. So the one with the 
So the so one without the weight goes at the back. Goes in the back there, so you can just slot one end into the groove, and then it should be able to just get into that spring. spring it. That's it. Seems happy there. there. And it's this one with the weight goes on the outside. At the top. With the weight at the top. Yeah, it's all the weird stuff went at the top. So you gotta like push that. There we go. Yeah, so they're all sitting in nice and, and yeah, it's it's a good idea in there. He's he's put them in first because otherwise, if he'd have greased them up, we'd have been you get covered grease in all grease. Over your hands. Do you want me to grab you the brake cleaner just to wipe the disc down? Uh, we Maybe shouldn't. We shouldn't have got anything on. No, it. It should be alright. We did give it a quick wipe. You can put yeah, brake cleaner on the disc if you're getting a bit oily. So we haven't put loads on there. Just a, a thin coat in, just so that. Right, we're ready now to snip. There, you got the scissors. There, you could snip the snip that cable tie. We've had it holding out the way. And make sure you you untwist the. If you're doing this, make sure you haven't got a twist. Any twist in there, in the cable. That all looks. I think we're good there. Good there. And then that should just as it's shown. If you've wound your pads back enough, should just slide straight over. Shouldn't the top. need to fight that in. I'll grab that while you get your the two little bolts. You could put a bit more Loctite on those if you want. It's got some left on there. I don't know whether it works twice, but... It should do, especially as we've got the fresh... Yeah. Uh, the fresh sliders in there. So got those started. And they were they were quite small, 13, were they? Yeah. So this time we need the 17 mil on the top because we've got that. We got super slidey now, so yeah. we double action in. That is better. Um, we should have done that on the rear, replace those sliders. The only trouble is our spanner's a little bit tight, <laughs> so you have to give it a good wiggle to get it back out. You can, you might want to just take a grinder to the head of the spanner and take a mill off of it. Just to make sure it's not too tight. There we go. Oh, wait, that's a bit enough for them there. Yeah, now obviously, exactly when you do your brakes, there. especially your front brakes, bear in mind that the first couple of times you use them, you're going to take, that slack, you're going to take that slack out, so don't go ragging it. And also, you're going to bed the first time any surface coatings are on there. So just do a few controlled breaks beforehand. Now, one thing we've got to do is we've got to fit that bracket back on. Now, we need to fit the new wear sensor, which we haven't got. So we're just going to refit the old one for now. But you will have to trace that wire back up and change him up there, won't you? Yeah, where's it connected? Where's he connected? He goes, follows this one back up, back up to there, and it looks like it's up behind the wheel arch here, it, it disappears off too, so I'm not sure how far back that goes. That's as, that's as in as ours is going to be for now. So there we go, that's, other than that, if you get problems with the, with the wear sensor, we'll do a separate video how to change the wear sensor. We'll put that bracket back on. And that bracket back on there, Ian. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice and simple, but that's all back together now. And that that's the job done, isn't it? Yep. So yeah, we repainted the we repainted but that's that's the front brake upgrade complete on the Land Rover Discovery 4. Now we have since found out while while we've been took the break and had lunch. Um, there's three sizes of brake disc used. Let me get this right. There's 320, which we saw on the Discovery 3 out there. Um, there's also a 336, 
which can be an upgrade. You can upgrade the 320 to a 336, and that uses the same caliper. You need a different carrier. Um, and then drill, the back drill, plate's drill. the same. You can't put this 360 onto the 320 or the 336 because it uses a different caliper and the back plate fouls. You may better take all those off. Um, if you want to go up to the 360 like we've got on this, you'd have to change the whole lot, lot. basically. So the whole lot being the caliper. The caliper, the, the pad, slider, caliper, the pads, the carrier, the disc, the, the plate, the back plate, basically everything that bolts onto the hub itself. Um, but we will upgrade the Discovery Three. But that's your Disco Four upgrade done. Good luck with that. Drive safe for the first time you drive it. Make sure everything's tight. Happy motoring.